what's your opinion of Abdullah the Butcher as a wrestler? Uh, I don't think he ever learned how to be a wrestler. What he did was not wrestling. I mean, to come out and, and jump a guy uh, and start beating on him and then uh, take his fork out of his pants and start jabbing a guy with the fork and the guy's bleeding everywhere, then he's bleeding everywhere, then he drops his elbow, which his old body covers the guy, and it's a, or it's a free-for-all brawl. That's that's not being a pro wrestler. That's that's being a, a a brawler. That now I guess he doesn't even get in the ring anymore. And I've seen matches a couple of years ago where he started the match right from the locker room. Now, uh, now in a match with Abdullah, I mean, is he really from the Sudan, and is he really forking his opponents or? No, he's not really from the Sudan, and he was supposed to be on all his interviews. He never talked, which was what he did. He was silent and always had a manager to talk for him. And then he'd go out in the restaurants. We'd go out in Puerto Rico somewhere when he was there. He's talking to everybody. He's wearing jewelry. He's got his jewelry on. He's got his big belt buckle on, and he's just saying everything to everybody. But yet they see him on TV the day before, and he's not talking, and he's from the Sudan. No, he's from Windsor, Ontario or somewhere in Canada, and he came over to Detroit, and that's where he broke in. And... He broke in trying to emulate or be like the, the original Sheik from Detroit, and the original Sheik never wrestled either. He carried the fork and jabbed people. Did he jab them? I'm, I'm sure he might have. I mean, there's probably some guys floating around that can say, yeah, he jabbed me with a fork and he jabbed me really, really hard. Should I have expected uh, when I wrestled Abdullah, knowing that pro wrestling is an athletic performance, should I have uh, expected going into that match that I would be cut by him and hurt for real. You never expect someone to, to start taking a nut by blade and a razor blade that they, they've used, they use on themselves or wherever it might have come from, start using it on you. No, it was never a normal practice at all by any means. Uh, Especially I, I, in this day and age. Well, in this day and age, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where uh, I definitely wouldn't want somebody doing that to me, and if they did, I'd be quite upset. Would, uh, would you see something like that happen in WWE? No, no. If if there's any bleeding, it would be because uh, I saw not so long ago some guy was actually hit over the head with a chair and the chair maybe turned sideways or something, and he did get a, uh, a, a an abrasion on his head that did bleed. Should uh, you ever expect the risk of death going into a professional wrestling match? I think there's assumed risk in anything we do, uh, but not – no, no, you shouldn't expect it. Why do you think WWE put Abdullah the Butcher in the Hall of Fame? I don't know that reason other than the fact that he's in Atlanta and it was, he, they, you know, but they didn't have to buy a plane ticket and, uh, you know, he would have wanted a first class ticket and he would have wanted a, a valet to come along. And so uh, I, I never understood that one. That was one that got me. So uh, they, they've done some things that I don't understand. I, I don't know why they would do it. Uh, and then knowing, knowing his background and, and, and how unappreciative he is of the business itself, uh, why they would have picked him, I don't know. Um, did you hear the uh, interview that Abdullah did where he said he basically gave away his Hall of Fame ring as soon as he got off the stage? I did see that. And to me, uh, to say, well, after... 50 years in the business, now they're going to put me in the Hall of Fame? Why didn't he do it 30 years ago? Well, they didn't have a Hall of Fame 30 years ago. It's not like other sports. This is an entertainment-type sport. So a Hall of Fame, in, in reality, in WWE is more or less a TV show, and you're getting a payday, and you're getting a ring. So then you can show every everybody in your restaurant or wherever you go your nice ring, and what do you do? You give it away. If that's what you want to do with the ring, then fine. You can do with it what you want. I think it's a bit disrespectful to do it right away. I mean, there's been guys that's pawned their rings. There's been guys that, that's auctioned their rings and things of that nature, but it's been because they really needed to do it. I mean, they needed money, and this was one way to get it. But I know some people that have given away or auctioned off their equipment, same as me. I don't have any sentimental ties to the business. I love the business, but I don't keep trophies of things that's sentimental to me. If I can make a buck off of them, I'd sell them. Uh, if, especially if I needed the money. I mean, every time I've needed some money, I try to put something on auction. But uh, for him then to turn around and say it, it was disrespectful for, to, for them to have him at that point in his career, hey, at that point in his career, he got a payday for doing nothing. And then he complained. They said, hey, you got to be here tonight for this thing, and then tomorrow you got to show up for the WrestleMania. And uh, 
I'm burping, excuse me. You got to show up tomorrow for the WrestleMania. For what I understand, from what I heard, he told them, hey, yeah, that's, two, that's two times I got to be here. I got to be paid twice. They said, no, the deal is you come for this tonight and you got to be back tomorrow. I wouldn't have put up with it. I'd have said, look, if you don't like it, you don't even have to be on the Hall of Fame tonight. We just give you, or you can be on, we give you a payday, you get the car, we send you home. Oh, the word I heard was Johnny, Johnny Laranitis came in and was telling everyone, like he always does, uh, because I've been there for one of those Hall of Fame things. He, he comes in and kind of tells everyone, here's what the deal is, here's how we're doing it, uh, this is what we want, this is what we expect, and uh, this is how Vince wants it done. And then he, he spoke up and said, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Come in here telling us what to do. I've been around 50 years. This guy's been around 30 years. This guy's been around 40 years. This guy's been around 25 years. This guy ain't done anything. What's he doing telling us what to do? Who are you to tell us what to do? You know, it was kind of embarrassing for Johnny, I'm sure. And if, there again, Johnny was not in a position to, to chastise or to <coughs> slap, an, uh, slap an, uh, an old timer on his hand, but he had every right to, to go and tell Vince or for himself and alone say, well, you know, Abby, if you got a problem, I, I'm glad he'd take you down to Vince's office. You can hash it out with him. And I know what Vince would have said. Abby, if you don't want to do it, there's a car waiting. You can go back to your restaurant. From what I understand, the biggest weekend you're ever going to have at your restaurant, the biggest weekend you're ever going to have, it's the Super Bowl of wrestling. There's 90,000 people in town for this. And they're all coming from all over the world. They've heard about Abdullah Butcher's barbecued rib restaurant and and asian food and what does he do he runs out of food first day so do you think he he would have made more money in his restaurant that weekend than he made for the hall of fame exactly so you think overall wrestlemania weekend he would have made a good deal of money oh because of WrestleMania. i wish i'd had a restaurant down there i thought about going and setting up a hotel room just to sign autographs on my own <laughs>